Yes. Might as well have a table. Yes. What would you like? Oh, let me. No, no, my own ground. Well? Oh, scotch and dry. And? Yeah, scotch, please. Just water. Must be five years since I met Bruce. Has he changed a lot? Not really, no. A little older. Like all of us. Not you, darling. I'm feeling it. Do you mind if we eat out tonight? Well, I've got a bit of work. We could go to that Indian restaurant. Oh, why not? And Lewis? If he wants, yes. Here we are. Thank you. Do you want to eat out tonight, curry? Well, it's a nice thought, but my daughter's bringing a couple of friends round, and I'm cook. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So what's it about, Mr. Woods? Please, Nick, Ivan. I'm not going to sit here listening to you two mistering each other all night. <laughs> yes, I suppose informality does suit the job at hand, anyway. Uh, you know what my job is, of course. No, you're a barrister. You work for the DPP as a public prosecutor. Right. You'll be getting some uh, paperwork from me shortly about a Mrs. Stacy, Mary Stacy. A reason, Kate? In a way. The reason I thought I'd have a word with you, first of all, is to uh, let you know a few things that I can't put in the official report. Like? Like she's a... 60-year-old monomaniac. In what particular way? She thinks that her brother was murdered for his money. Uh, do we know her brother? Arnold Humble. Well, that Arnold Humble? Yes. I told Ivan it would interest you. That's him. When he sold out to RTZ. Made over a million quid. Do you know that? When was that? 1958. Well, let's have a look at something more recent. You got names on those two? That's a photograph taken about a month before he died. The woman's a nurse. Name of Anne Gerard. She used to look after him and her dotty nephew. The fellow's a chauffeur. Name of Gom. What? G O M E. Mm. And that's a nephew. Yeah. Doesn't look too bright. No, mentally retarded. Has been since birth. Had it to that, he can't talk. And who's the other fellow? Uh, Budgeon. Henry Budgeon. He was Umble's uh, private physiotherapist. Well, there's no statement from him in the file. No, he was sacked a few weeks before it happened. The size of that fellow, eh? Yeah, he's big enough. His mother's coming in tomorrow. Yeah, what's she like? Well, according to my information, she's a 60-year-old monomaniac. Just like they say. Runs in families. Do they think he was pushed, then, or what? What makes you say that? Well, according to the coroner's jury, old man Humble died from drowning caused accidentally in his private swimming pool. So why are we taking interest? Not we, me. I'm bored. See you. Bye. Oh, you coming round the pub lunchtime? No. I'm going slumming. Spare me a bit of your time. Be a nice change from making out the grocery list. Do sit down. Thank you. What is it you want? Well, I'm in the process of closing one of our files. In fact, it's about Mr. Humble's death. But that's all over, surely? Oh, yes, but as I say, we want to write finish to it. Now, I'm just the dog's body who's tying up the loose ends. I see. How can I help? Well, I've read the report of the coroner's inquest. That's about all I have done. Now, you didn't really agree with the verdict, did you? Why do you say that? Well, you're not the only one. Mr. Humble's sister doesn't agree either. You mean Mrs. Stacy? That's right. Mrs. Stacy hasn't been in this house for 20 years. What could she possibly know about Mr. Humble? And you were with him for the last six years of his life. I was. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Dorothy, may we have some tea, please? Yes, 
You say I wasn't satisfied with the verdict. I don't think that's quite accurate. Well, you said he seemed perfectly fit the night before. Yes. I've been a private nurse for over ten years, Mr. Lewis. One gets to know one's patients pretty well under those circumstances. And I think I knew Mr. Humble as well as anybody. Well, was he a good man to work for? Oh, no. An absolute tartar. You know his background, do you? Well, I know he made his money out of mining. Not mining. Prospecting. He was one of the last of the old-time prospectors. Spent 40 years of his life in the bush. Africa, Australia, South America, you name it. So he made all of this from prospecting? Lucky man. Not luck. Work, mainly. There's not many qualified mineralogists would spend three years in the Upper Niger living off wild pig and palm wine. He did. And sold the concession for a quarter of a million, and then went right back to work as before. You admired him a lot. Yes, I did. But you don't think his death was accidental? Come in. And he'd been having his dip every morning since he'd been here. I know he was old, but he was fit enough. The maid found the body, didn't she? Yes. Mr. Humble was lying sort of half under the water. I got Tommy to pull him out, but it was too late. But if it wasn't an accident, Miss Gerard. I know. Suicide? Or murder? <laughs> and I don't believe either of those. I'm sorry, I'm not being very helpful, am I? What are you going to do? Me? Stay here. But you're quite well off now, surely. Oh, yes. I was left half of the estate. But you see, I have responsibilities. The house. The house. And Tommy. Enjoy your gardening, Tommy. Please smile at him, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis is going now, Tommy. Bye. Bye. A dozen of each, okay? Mm, I should think so. We're not issuing them. I just thought Nick would want some. Want what? Oh, I got filtering off some prints of those people in the humble business. The chauffeur and the physio. Well, what do I need photos for? Help you to find them? Well, I thought you were getting in touch with them. Henry Budgeon moved out of a private hotel in King's Cross on June the 2nd. That is three days after Humble's death. Roger Gom also left his place on July the 18th. Neither of them have been heard from since. Uh, July the 18th. That would be about a week after the inquest. Just about. Of course, it could be a coincidence. Either that or they came into money. I'll keep trying. You've got Mrs. Stacy doing about two Yes, buzz me down here, will you? You think they are the hands in old Humble's till? Well, according to his bankers, he only left about 200 grand. Real poverty street, eh? Oh, yes. For a man who made the best part of four million over ten years. You sure about that? I checked with the firms he sold out to. They're very cagey people, but they came across. And you're wondering what's happened to the money? Oh, wouldn't you? I've got his nurse looking through his papers. Let me tell us something about him. Unless she nicked it. Well, you know the first rule of police work? Everybody's guilty until they're proved innocent. And even then, the jury that let him off was probably bent. Hello? Oh, OK. Mrs. Stacy. I was told I was going to be interviewed privately. I don't want an audience when I'm discussing family business. Oh, it's not an audience, Mrs. Stacy. Uh, Miss Burton's my assistant. Uh, she'll be directly concerned with your case. It's not my case. It's my brother I'm here about. Yes, well, I believe you dispute the coroner's verdict. I wasn't asked to give evidence. Yes, but you hadn't seen your brother for several years, had you? What's that got to do with it? I'm his only sister. Yes, but your brother died months ago. You only approached your local police the week before last. Well? Well, it was a bit late, wasn't it? Well, I had to think about it. I hadn't had a proper opportunity to see the will then. Oh, I see. See what? 
Would Mr. Stacy like a cup of coffee? No. The will surprised you. You can say that again. Two thousand pounds was all I got. Two thousand pounds out of all he had. And that nurse, whatever she calls herself, she got nearly everything. Well, the will has not been disputed, Mrs. Stacy. Hasn't it? Well, I'm disputing it. I'm his only relative. Do you realize that? Well, there's your son, Tommy. What do you mean? Well, in his will, Mr. Humble says that he leaves half the estate to Miss Gerard, knowing that she'll take care of Tommy. I know what it says. And I know he'd never have done that to his only sister. Are you suggesting the will's a forgery? Of course it is. Do you want to know what I think? I think she'd been rubbing him blind for all those years. I think she got him to write the will out like that. And as soon as he'd done it, she drowned him. Well, that's a pretty strong accusation, Mrs. Stacy. I know what I know. Well, have you never thought that Mr. Humble may have been more concerned for his nephew than for you? What do you mean? Well, he did take the boy into his own home after you'd had him put away. Well, it was easy for him, with all that money and servants. He didn't have to clean up after him. He's Tommy. Well, he seems a nice young fellow. Fat lot, you know about it. All right, Mr. Stacy, I've got the statement you made to your local police. And I've listened to what you said this morning. I'll just give you a brief word of warning. If you go around in public saying these things, you could find yourself in trouble. You mean you're not going to do anything about it? I said I've got your statement. And what are you going to do with it? Mrs. Stacy, I've half a mind to tell you. sad. I'll bet there's nobody else could stay down so long. Come on. Clothes on and we'll go for a little walk. Oh, wow. <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore. No. Thank Ivan for the introduction, won't you? It's a good job she didn't know about the missing money. She'd have really gone to town. Missing money? Did Phil tell you? Ivan's not an idiot, you know, Nick. Well, did they make inquiries about it, the DPP? Yes. And came up with a blank every time. Oh, I don't suppose she could have. What? Well, Mrs. Stacy, she's pretty fit for her age. Wouldn't have taken a lot of strength to push Humble's head underwater. Two thousand pounds? Well, she wasn't to know that. What about the nurse, Anne Gerard? Well, what about her? Is she a suspect? It's accidental death. You don't have suspects. So why are we doing all this work? To keep your fella happy. I make a fair job of that. The chauffeur, Roger, gone. What about him? He's just bought a car. Has he? While you were taking our charming lady downstairs, that came through from vehicle licensing. Well, that's not far away. You're going to see him? Well, if I don't, you'll tell your fella that I'm falling down on a job, won't you? Uh... I honestly don't know how I can help. Uh, I mean, it's so long ago. Seven months. Well, is that all? Well, it seems longer. We had quite a job finding you, Mr. Gum. You didn't leave a forwarding address. I know. Well, um, when I left the job, I hadn't anywhere to go till uh, Scylla put me up. Hello, Scylla. Hello. I tried to find you through Social Security, but you didn't sign on. Oh, uh, I don't go in for that sort of thing. You got another job then? Uh, no, not yet. Tough going. Well, not really. Uh, I had a bit saved up. Uh, we've kept going, haven't we, still a lot, eh? Yeah, I saw the car outside. Nice, isn't it? And, of course, Mr. Humble left you, uh, what was it, 500? Uh, yes, that's right. But you haven't had that yet? Uh, no, not yet. Well, you want to get a hold of it, the will's been proved, you know. Oh, yeah, hey, we're going to do that right, Silla, eh? Yeah, as soon as we can. Well, there is one thing you can help me with. Uh, you, oh, sit down. Well, thank you. Do you remember the last time you took Mr. Humble to the bank? The last time? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, he withdrew a very large sum of money, didn't he? Three bank drafts. I think it was, uh, 100 and something. 120,000, that was it. Well, you know that, did he tell you? Well, I used to go in with him. Well, there's been a query from his estate. 
The money doesn't show up in any of his accounts. Ah, oh, I'm not surprised. No. Yeah, uh, he's gone now. It can't hurt him to tell you. He was transferring most of his money abroad. Most of it? Yeah. Past year, he must have got a million and a half out. He did it through some fellow in the Isle of Man. Then I suppose it ended up in some numbered account in Switzerland. Well, are you sure about this? Oh, work it out for yourself. Five years ago, he was worth three or four million. And all he left on paper was, what, 200,000? So who gets the rest? Gnomes of Zurich, I suppose. <laughs> you haven't mentioned this before. Well, nobody asked me. And you're quite happy with your 500 quid? I've worked for rich people all my life, sir. Money's just aggro, do you know that? Now, me, I prefer love. Right, chicken, hey? Oh, oh Rog Gerald! Pass it over to Fraud Squad. Well, where's the fraud? Transferring money abroad. According to our pal, the chauffeur, if he's square, that is. A real suspect at last? Oh, yeah. Kate Burton? Oh, here it is. There's a Miss Gerard to see Mr. Lewis. Well, that's the nurse. Send her up, please. Up here, Miss Gerard. She left it late enough. Oh, it's nearly six. Hello. I'd have been long earlier, but I had a lot of trouble finding this place. Hello. Uh, Miss Gerard, this is Kate Burton. She uh, works with me. Well, I hope I've done the right thing, then. Ah. Yesterday morning, you were asking about Mr. Humble's business papers. I've sorted them out, but it's going to give you a lot of work. Thank you. Sorry. I'd have thought his solicitor would have had them. I suppose he saw them after the funeral. Well, I'll be going. No, oh, hang on, Miss Gerard. Uh, I'll walk you down. You come in, Kate. Oh, I'll just lock up. We usually have a quick drink at the local before we go home. Would you like to join us? Yes, that's a lovely idea. I can't make it tonight. I've got friends coming. Oh. Miss Gerard will keep you company. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, see you in the morning. Good night, Miss Gerard. Good night. It's all right? Fine. Do you know, it's an awfully long time since I was in a public house. You like it? It's marvellous. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming. Cheers. Cheers. Do you mean that? Well, there's no fun drinking alone. No, that's very true. <laughs> it's all right, I'm not a secret drinker. When Mr. Humble was alive, we used to have a couple of sherries before dinner. I don't bother now. Well, doesn't Tommy take a drink? Oh, no. He's only a child, you know. Mm, he's a big one. Yes, I suppose he is. A big baby. I saw his mother today. Mrs. Stacy. Yeah, not my favourite lady. I've not met her. Mr. Humble sometimes talked about her. What did he say? <laughs> Nothing at all printable. Let's not talk about her, please. Well, what shall we talk about? Well, you know about me. I don't know anything about you. What sort of thing? I know you're married. Tell me about your wife. No, you're wrong. I was married. Divorced? Mm-hmm. I've never been married. Any particular reason for that? I don't know, really. Perhaps all the men I wanted were already fixed up. Let me buy you a drink now. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. please. I'll bet I'm richer than you are. In fact, I am. I'm very rich. Now, that is not the point. As somebody said to me today, money only leads to aggro. Night, Phil. Can I? Nick round the boozer. Why? That photo of Henry Budgeon. The yard come up with a match on it. Has he got a record? And a spare name. Harry Bourne. He's done time. Let's catch Nick before he goes, eh? No, leave it till tomorrow. Why? Because he's interviewing somebody. In the pub? Well, it must have been more sociable when Mr. Humble was alive. Sociable? Oh, well, more people. Budge and the physio and the chauffeur. You don't ever stop working, do you? Police training. All right, ask away. But well, first, 
I don't know quite how to put this, but just to save you any embarrassing questions, I think I'd better say that although we lived in the same house, there was never anything between me and either of them. Oh, is that important? It is to me. I was hoping it was to you. You're direct, aren't you? Yes. Okay. So tell me about Roger Gone. Go on, Rog. <laughs> A little man. How much is he gonna give you? A lot of money. Yeah? Oh, yes, a great deal of money. And uh, he's a little man. Well, he's what they call a gnome. Go on, you're having me on. There's no such thing. You've heard of the gnomes of Zurich? Yeah. Well, this is a gnome of Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> Rog, stop it. Hey, you've never been abroad, have you, love? Yes, I have. Where have you been? I've been to Jersey. Yeah. It's really nice. I'm talking about abroad. I mean Jersey. Well, it's not in England, is it? Hey. Do you know where we're going on Thursday? I can I if you won't tell me. Well, pass me jacket over. There you are. Now then. What does that say? London Heathrow and Gr Grantley Adams International Airport. Oh, is that a long way? It's Barbados, my chicken, in the West Indies. Oh, it's a millionaire's paradise. Well, we ain't millionaires. Aren't we? Aren't we, though? I thought I'd find you here. Hello. What are you having, love? Oh, nothing, thanks. Well, how was it? Quite pleasant, really. Mother cooked some stuffed peppers. Then we had some Stilton and a couple of bottles of Plonk. Have you eaten? Not as well as that. No? I ate here, as a matter of fact. On your own? No. Not that Kate Burton. No, not that Kate Burton. Ma's very interested in that Kate Burton. I said you were pretty thick with her. Who are you with them? Nobody you know. Female? Yes. Isn't it exciting? Hey, you're not... I'm not what? Nothing. She nice? I've only just met her, for God's sake. Well, what's that got to do with it? Yes, she's nice. Do I get to meet her? I don't know. Do you want to? Yes. Are you trying to rush me into something? <laughs> Hello. Morning. Oh, dear. Work. Did you give her anything, by the way? I beg your pardon? A receipt for the papers. No, I didn't, did I? Oh, well, perhaps you can take one out next time you're there. Yes, I'll do that. I checked Roger gone. Anything? Two traffic offences. What about the girl, uh, Scylla Mayhew? Blank. They're all such lovely people in this case. Yes, all except this one. Phil had a lucky touch with the photos. Henry Budgeon, alias Harry Borden. GBH, theft, employed, more GBH. Well, that's more interesting. Yes, but how do we go about finding him? Well, if he's got money, he'll start spending it. And then we find him. I know I agreed to monthly instalments, but I've changed my mind. No, not even a month. Look, don't muck about. You've got the money there. Now, you just listen to me. I'll be on the common at 12 o'clock by the lake. So you be there and have the lolly with you, all of it, and then I won't need to tell anybody what I saw, will I? You're half strong with it, aren't you, Rog? People like that, you've got to be. Who is it, Rog? Who's got this money? You know, little pigs have big ears. Hey, you. You got some shopping to do before we catch the plane this afternoon. Oh, come we eat out. Oh, don't be daft. Not that kind of shopping. Get yourself some summer clothes and things. Oh, Rog, all that money. Not a thing later than June. Anything turn up from the computer? No, no help so far. They say people don't just disappear. Now, put out a request to Interpol. I can't do that, Nick. 
The coroner's verdict was accidental death. Nobody wants budging for anything. Nobody except me. What about... Yeah? Well, if you think that Humble was killed, Budgeon isn't the only suspect. Well, I can't lean on Gom again. Gom? Or the sister? Or even Miss Gerard? Well, for you, I'll go and lean on Miss Gerard. Uh, you never know, she might even give me lunch. I've not been a lot of help, then. Well, nobody could be. Don't blame yourself. Are you finished with the case now? Well, until something turns up. Does that mean... Does that mean I'm not going to see you again? Oh, do you want to see me again? Yes, I do. Be getting cold. But he's not back yet, and he said he would be. No, you don't understand. We've got our plane tickets for the West Indies. The flight goes at half three. It's three o'clock now. Oh, look, listen. There was one of your blokes round here the other afternoon. No, no, a fella called Lewis. Yeah, Inspector he is. He knows us. You ask him. How the hell do I know what he wanted? Hello? No, he's not in at the moment. Priscilla Mayhew, yes, we know about her. The West Indies. Who were they? Yes, I think the inspector would be very interested. Thank you. Don't move. The Cedars and Gerard. Oh, I see. It's for you, darling. I think it's Miss Burton. Hello, Kate. Oh, really? That's very interesting. Yes, I'll see her. Goodbye. More work? I'm afraid so. I have to go. Nick. Thank you. Nick's still out? I've just spoken to him. He's in Wimbledon. Thanks, Bob. Is it important? No, not if he's busy, no. Sounded very busy. Well, we'll leave it then. Is he still investigating into old man Humble's millions? Yes. Interviews in depth with the principal beneficiaries. I know, but he's got money, you know. No, I don't know. He's been out of work for months. Now, two tickets to Barbados, that must cost over 600 quid. So where's the money come from, silly? Well, he knows the man. Well, what man? A little man. He knows a little man. That's what he told me. He said he's a gnome. A what? A gnome, like a womble. You're feeling all right. I'm only telling you what he told me. OK. He knows a little man who gives him money. Now, is there anything else? Phoned him up, didn't he? Yeah? Phoned him because this manly the bloke owes him. He wants it all at once as we can go to the West Indies. Yeah, well, when did he phone him, silly? Well, it was early, wasn't it? Well, this morning? Early, yeah. Going to meet him, he was. We'll meet him where? Oh, I told you, didn't no, I? No, you didn't. Well, he's a womble. He's meeting them at Wimbledon, isn't he? On the common, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. The third litter bin from the left. No, he didn't say that. By the lake, he said. Oh, yes, where they wash their little dustpans. You don't believe me, do you? Oh, but I do, indeed I do. Then you will find him for me, won't you? 
Scylla, are you sure you saw two tickets to Barbados? Well, have you checked with the airport? No, you haven't. I'll use your phone. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss. Thank you, Miss. Very kind. Really keep this weather. Tolly. Hello, Nicolo. Uh, this is my sidekick, Sid Bevan. Yes. Hello. Thank you. What can we do for you? Well, I was just telling Miss Burton. You were around seeing a bird called Mayhew yesterday, right? Now, what's happened to her? Oh, not her. A boyfriend. Well, Roger gone. Well, tell me. Well, we found him on Wimbledon Common a couple of hours ago. He dead? Oh, too right. He's head bashed in. About a quarter of a mile from the place he used to work. A house called the Cedars. Miss Burton says you know the people there. Yeah. Any idea when he copped it? Not yet. Sometime yesterday, though. About noon. How do you know, sir? He had an appointment to meet somebody at noon. Do we know who? A little man. Come again? Well, that's what I thought. Unless he was joking. What do you mean, sir? The biggest man I've seen in my life lives at the Cedars. If that's the man from the television shop, Dorothy, it's the set in Tommy's room I want him to look at. It's for you, Miss. Inspector Lewis and some other people. Some colleagues of mine, Miss Gerard. Inspector Tully, Sergeant Bevan. How do you do, Miss? How do you do? Please sit down. Oh, thank you. Yes, what is it? There's been a development. Yes? Roger Gom. What about him? His body was found this morning over there on the common. Dead? Murdered, miss. No doubt about that. It's like a nightmare. First Mr. Humble and now Roger. What's going on? Miss Gerard, we're pretty sure that Gom was killed about noon yesterday. Now, you were being interviewed by Mr. Lewis then. Yes, he was, uh... You were here till three o'clock? Near a half past. Any idea where Mr. Stacy was at that time? Tommy? You can't seriously suspect Tommy. Uh, we don't suspect anybody, miss. He's about, is he? Yes, he's in the kitchen. We'd like to see him, if you may, miss. But why? It's for the best, Miss Gerard. <sighs> nice woman. Yes. She came into half the money. That's right. Who got the rest? Well, there's a few bequests of servants and his sister. The bulk of the other half went to charities. That's big hearted of him. Or maybe giving his sister the V sign. He understands what you say, but he can't talk. These gentlemen want to talk to you, Tommy. Tommy, did you go out at all yesterday? Tommy, yesterday, did you go outside? And what did you do? Oh, yes. You were chopping wood for Mr. Groves. Yes? Ask him if he went on the common at all. He's not allowed to. He never leaves the grounds. Ask him, please. Tommy, did you go out there on the common? I don't think you're doing much good, Ben. No. I'd like to see the rest of the staff, if you don't mind, miss. Yes, of course. Shall I get them in here? As you please. Come on, Tommy. Well, big, isn't it? I did warn you. Look, Nick, you know these people better than us. I mean, what do you make of it? Well, if I was going to knock somebody off, I wouldn't do it on my own doorstep. Are you going? 
Unless you want me. Oh, I suppose not. Well, cheers, Nick. Oh, there is one thing. Yeah? The humble file. I think you ought to have a look at it. I'll send it round this afternoon. Hey, Ben. Yeah? The only person round here for Chummy to have been blackmailing is the Gerard woman. Yeah. And she was here with Nick when he got chopped. We're absolutely sure about that, are we? Would you like to try telling him that to his face, Sergeant? Sorry. You should be. So, instead of a monomaniac 60-year-old that nobody wants to know about, there's a new murder come along. More work for Lewis. No, not our pigeon. District have got it now. Mm. Well, that's it. Well, he should be pleased. I don't know. I think he was starting to take a personal interest in the late Mr. Humble and his entourage. Kate, I've this lovely idea for Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. You've met Mr. Woods before, I think. Yeah, sure. Hello. Hello. If it's important, I think I know where you can find Mr. Lewis. No, no, not that serious, no. What is it, then? Well, just a daft idea, I'd. If you two have something to discuss, I can wait outside. For heaven's sake, Phil, if you have got something to say, then say it. It's this money bit. Yes. Well, I've checked with a mate of mine who's in the currency business. Seems that if you've got a number to count in one of those Swiss banks and you turn your cards in, then that's your lot. I think we all knew that. Unless you are a legal beneficiary or trustee of the deceased. In which case? In which case, if I remember my private international law correctly, you make a deposition to the international court. Something like a writ of replevin, yes? Dead right. So? So what's to stop the pair of them doing that? If the money's in Switzerland, I mean. The two of them? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't think Mrs. Stacy did it. Do you? You've got to realise that Tommy's a prime suspect. But he's so gentle, he wouldn't hurt a fly. Now, how did he get on with Roger Gunn? You've seen him with people, Nick. He just watches, and when he's pleased, he smiles. Well, there's no history of violence. Never. Well, you've lifted a weight off my mind. I suppose if I hadn't been with you, you'd have suspected me. You'd have been my first choice. No, they're not going to solve this one till they find out who got the rest of Humble's money. The rest of what money? You mean you weren't surprised when the old man left a little? A little? A quarter of a million pounds? Well, yes, considering what he made. Yes, I suppose you're right. He should have <coughs> left a lot more, shouldn't he? Well, it never occurred to you? No. I mean, I was so shocked at his death, and, and I was more worried about how it would affect Tommy than anything else. Hey, Nick, uh, you don't suppose he could have hidden the money at the Cedars? I mean, it's a big house. There must be dozens of possible no, places. we won't find it there. How can you be so sure you could try? Well, there's no point. Gom was blackmailing somebody, so he knew who got the money. Anyway, it's not my case anymore. But I'm glad it was. Why? I met you. Not Lewis's wife. No, that's Miss Gerard. Oh, that one, Humble's nurse. Quite nice, isn't she? Isn't he sticking his neck out? I rather think he means to. Nick. Yeah? Drive me home. What now? Please. And stay with me. No, he's not in yet, Liz. Oh, didn't he? Well, perhaps he had to go somewhere overnight. Yes, of course, if you're free. I'm sure he's bound to be in fairly soon. Bye. Morning, Kate. Morning. You told Nick, have you? Nick? Told him what? Give over. I told you last night. Oh, that currency business, no. It could be a great help to him, you know. A help? Well, I mean, it sort of finds things down a bit, doesn't it? Phil, have you ever thought? No. Phil, you know that Nick's marriage split up five years ago? Yeah, you told me. Well, then, use your eyes and stop being such a fool. As soon as this business is over, you wouldn't consider living here. Well, I 
couldn't. Is it Tommy? No, no. My daughter, the job, is a lot of things. But that doesn't make any difference. You know what I mean. Mr. Tommy's going for his dip now, miss. Will you be going? Tell him I'll be there in a minute, Dorothy. Yes, miss. It's one of his games I have to watch him swim. Can I watch? Yes, he'd love it. Go on, I'll follow you in a tick. Enjoying yourself, Tommy? Miss Gerard's on her way. Well, go on, let's see how many lengths you can do. No, uh, I, uh, I don't want to swim this morning. Let go. Let go. Let go, you idiot. You idiot! something's going on. Is she nice? I don't know. Look, do you want me to call her? Oh, no. No, I can wait. It'd be a bit rude to interrupt something. No, Ben, he's been shot. Yes, I was there. Miss Gerard. Oh, sure, sure, I'll wait. He was trying to kill you. Oh, no. Man? Yes. Is that the way Humble died? Why? I don't know. I found him. He'd held him down. How did you get him to do it? You don't mean that. You think... You think I made him? When I was in the pool, I heard you. Not him you shouted. But I don't know what I said. You can't think that about me. I think me. I knew when they found Gom's body, maybe even before. But I was with you. But Tommy wasn't. Now Tommy's dead, you're in the clear. How many people did he kill for you? Humble and Gom? And Henry Budgeon? You can't love me and think that. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? Please. On the idiot. other hand, you did shoot him. I had to to save you. No. What do you mean? I'd fallen in the pool. He was trying to help me out, and you shot him. No! That's how it's going to be, Anne, because otherwise you get away with it, and I can't let you do that. I love you. You can't want to hurt me. No, I'm a trained dog. I catch villains. You're going down. We can have such a wonderful life. There's no Tommy now. There's just you and me. And I've got money. 
I know where all the money is. <laughs> oh, Nick, it'll be so lovely. Haven't got the message, have you? I don't. I can't believe you. You really thought I was in love with you? Haven't been in here since, um... About four weeks. Of course. And we were watching the lovebirds. It's not in very good taste, Ivan. Oh, yes, she was the lady with the revolver, wasn't she? You're not handling it. Too big for me. It'd be quite a coast of ever when it comes off. Number one court and all that. <laughs> so he says, who, who do I see about? <clears throat> I said, don't ask me, mate. You'll have to sort it out yourself. <laughs> you haven't heard a word I've said, have you? Oh, I'm sorry, Phil. You can't win them all, you know. No. When you can, maybe you shouldn't. I think I'll make a move. Oh, come on, Nick. You can't leave me in on my own. Well, I've done worse things, Phil. 